right? And so suffering really becomes a reality as a result of the introduction of sin and death into the human experience. Christ comes and he redeems us. Right. I thought we were restored whole again. Why still the pain? Why the suffering? When he says, take up your cross and follow me, we'll follow you where? Hmm. You know, I, I often ask, like, where am I following you to? But ultimately, I'm following him into glory. The Holy Spirit is is um, the seal, the you know the stamp, and the image in that seal is Christ. The image that's in that seal is the image of Christ, and He makes holy ones with the image of the Holy One when He stamps on us. Right. The most important thing that should inspire us from the life of Saint Pope Gregorius or any saint is to love God generously. I'm really happy you brought up St. Pope Carlos VI because you read Silent Patriarch or hear the stories or whatever. My own father, you know, met him several times, many miracles. There's no Coptic family that doesn't have a story, right? Sure. And you read them and you want to be him. You know what I mean? So it's funny that you say discernment. It's like, that's it. I want to be like him. I want to be him. I just want to hug from him. Yeah, yeah, I want to <laughs> hug from him. But I, I'm glad you, you brought him up because... So you read these stories and you want to emulate, but you're saying discernment. You yes. read the way he lived and you want to emulate. But I mean, I, I'm, I'm talking about myself. If I take off my clothes, put on a black robe and go in the middle of the desert, yeah, I'm coming not, back in that. deep trouble. It's going to be a big problem, especially at night. Once the sun goes down, I might be denying my faith out of fear. But so you, you, you read of these great saints that touch your heart. And I'm glad you, you brought Pope Carolus up. What what do I do with that? What do that what do I do with that warm feeling I get inside reading about his life and I want to be like him and I want the relationship he had with what's, Christ? What's the most important thing that should inspire us from the life of Saint Pope Carlos or any saint? It's to love God generously. Generously, right? That's oh, it, right? Okay. And the and, way he loved God mm -hmm. is what we read about in his biography, right? Which is related to many, many circumstances and you know uh you know issues related to again god's providence for what he needed for the church at the time right um but but there's something really important in the silent patriarch and i i i bring this up almost every time i talk about spiritual life uh it's a it's a part of the of the explanation from the late uh, Bishop Athanasius of Beni Swift, uh, who was one of the many disciples of Father Mina, the solitary, when he was in Old Cairo from the time of 1948 to 1959, and that's a really important time because that's the only time that we uh, have a picture of Father Mina Pokrulus as a spiritual father discipling a group of young men. Right? Like that, like as Pope, we don't hear about how he took confessions and mm -hmm. how he advised people, uh, and certainly not much also in the windmill. But this period, there was a time of discipleship, right? And so many figures, Pope Shiruda, Bonimetta, mm -hmm. and Bathanasius, uh, the all-star team. Medius, I mean, so many of them, the right? The spiritual the, the, the great renaissance of our church, mm -hmm. we could say many of those people all went through uh, the wind Father Mina in, yeah. in, in, in that time period. And what M. Athanasius says in one of his, uh, his interviews or his uh, reminiscences of, 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 of the saint is he said that uh, Father Mina at the time, he said he didn't uh, want to create, uh, you know... Um, a one-size-fits-all. A one-size-fits-all you know, like, this is what I did, this is what you have to do. Hmm. Those who came to him as disciples, he he did what any good spiritual director should do, which is to help the person discover how is the Holy Spirit leading you to a life of holiness and perfection, right? And so what, what, um, what Bishop Athanasio said was, he said, if he found somebody that loved to pray the Psalms, he would encourage him to spend more time with the Psalms. If he found somebody who loved to pray the Jesus prayer, he would encourage him to spend more time with the Jesus prayer. In that order. <laughs> if he loved, if somebody loved to meditate on the scriptures, 
he would tell them to spend more time with the scriptures. Yeah. If somebody loves service, he would say, he would give them money to help them with the service, mm-hmm. right? And so he said he, he sought to cultivate freedom in the person to discover the path that the Holy Spirit was That's calling right. that person to, not to be an imitation, a copy of himself. That's a true spiritual director, right? And so when, we, when we're inspired by the life of any saint, what, what should inspire us is the love that they had for Christ and the commitment, right? The, like, like the, to commit myself more fully to my discipleship to the Lord, to carry my cross, to follow him, to love him, right? What does it come down to, right? The, the, when the, the Lord was asked, what is the greatest of the commandments? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your soul, with all your mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. Right? And so um, it's good to be inspired by the saints. Certainly, uh, I think Father Carlos and I are, mm-hmm. are, would say that St. Pope Carlos is our great patron saint and, and the one that inspires us. And as millions and millions of, of people um, likewise have. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but we have to realize that I'm not called to be an imitation. Well, what about emulation? Again, in, in what areas that we can extract that are applicable in the spiritual life to everybody? So the, the, the focus on the life of prayer in whatever form that takes. Right? The focus on a sacramental life, especially the Eucharist. A focus on now what's one of the essential sort of qualities that you read especially in the silent patriarch and throughout the miracle stories is this deep compassion right i think for me uh what inspires me the most or what what touches me the most when i read any of the stories of of this great saint is his 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 tremendous compassion he's there's a certain certain tenderness tender-heartedness that he shows in, in his interactions with people, even with his enemies, even with those who are actively persecuting him. He has this very merciful, tender-hearted um, way of dealing with people. You know, That's something we can all emulate, right? Yeah. But, but to be a patriarch, no. Mm-hmm. To be a cleric, well, no. To be a wonder worker, no. To be clairvoyant, you know, none of these things are, are necessary for holiness or for salvation. But when you read about how, you know, he would shy away from people who say wonderful things about him, but he would love the people who would, you know, mock him or speak roughly to him. You know, you think of these things. Are these not qualities to want to emulate? Yes. Again, I think I think we ask ourselves, are these universal qualities of the spiritual life that Mm -hmm. that and I think, yes, you know, we wrongfully accused and accepted. Exactly. Now maybe we're not going to be able to do it to the extent that that we see in his in these stories, but he built up to it too. You know, don't don't right. forget that like this was after you know years and years of, of, of denying himself yeah. and struggling to reach that point where he could love his enemies the way he did and forgive them. Perfect. I love that you said build up because that was my next question. Before you do. Okay, go for yes. it. Uh, Just yeah. remind me, build up, okay? Because I'm going to forget. <laughs> build up. Okay, excellent. Go ahead. You're yes. going to remember what it is? Uh, no, but go ahead. I'll remember. No, no, no. Just kidding. No, no. <laughs> I don't want to. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. Saint Athanasius, in his letters to Saint Serapion and the Holy Spirit, he says, he says, you know, the Holy Spirit is is um, the seal, the you know, the stamp, and the image in that seal is Christ. The image that's in that seal is the image of Christ. Mm-hmm. And he makes holy ones with the image of the holy one when he stamps on us, right? Mm-hmm. Now, Ab- Ab- Abuna, F- Father Kirillos, <laughs> but he, 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 uh, he mentions two saints, uh, Saint, Saint Tamav Irini, Mother Irini, and um, Baba Krolos, Saint Kirillos VI, who were both in love with other saints that they wanted to emulate, to be like mm-hmm. Saint Irini, like Saint, Saint Mercurius, Mercurius of the Two Swords, and and Baba Krolos's icon is is I mean his is Saint, on top of Saint, Saint Mina, Mina yeah. Yeah. is Saint Mina, mm-hmm. and, he, and side by side now the two names cannot be separated. He's mm-hmm. forever solidified the relationship between those two saints in his own life, right? And yet one is a fourth century martyr 
is fourth century or is mm. the third century? Because I mean, uh, I think early regardless, early fourth, one's a sol- right? soldier, right? Soldier right, around, right, and mm-hmm. the other one is a patriarch in the twentieth century, mm-hmm. and yet no similarities, and and yet both are stamped with the image of Christ. Christ. Mm-hmm. Any icon we have up in the church is the image of Christ yeah. in that saint. Mm-hmm. To fully flourished. Mm-hmm. If I could uh, quote also a couple of uh, non-Orthodox contemporary, uh, like Father Henry Nouwen, mm. he says that um, you know that every human soul is meant to be sort of a unique saint, right? Like like each human soul is so unique that, as Father Quillis said, all saints resemble Christ, yet they, they don't. They are not exactly like one another. Yeah, personhood. Right? So that's really, if you think about, it, sort of mind blowing. You can have a billion saints, a billion saints resemble Christ, and none of them are like one another. Mm-hmm. How is that even possible, right? But that's that's what is so beautiful about the human soul is that each each human soul is called to be a unique expression of a saint. Um, Therese of Lisieux, a, a, a contemporary uh, a Western saint. She she used a very simple example of like flowers in a garden, you know, and she said it wouldn't be very pleasing to God if every flower in the garden was a rose. In the same rose. In the same <laughs> rose, right? But he takes pleasure in the fact that there are lilies and daisies and roses and right. And so, you know, that that's what Father Coles is saying is, is is so beautiful, is that I just need to discover the saint that God wants me to be. You know. Yeah. And it, it may look look nothing like the saint that I love the most in terms of like the outward manifestation, my vocation, right? And it it's not supposed to, you know. And we live in a very different time, different circumstances. Maybe the kind of holiness that God's calling us to, the way that holiness manifests itself is going to be very different than how it did in the fourth century. You know, there's an interesting story that Father Zacharias always tells, probably Father Kosh, you know this better than me, about uh, an el- uh, yeah, uh, a disciple who goes to his Abba and he says, uh, you know, what do you make of our generation? And the Abba says, uh, our generation only has done 50% or half of what the previous generation did. And then the disciple says, well, what will become of the next generation? And he says, the next generation will only do half of the great works of our generation. And he said, and what will happen in the last days? And he said, in the last days, they will not have any of the works that our great fathers of the past generations have had. But those who are able to keep the faith will be greater in the kingdom of God than those who are able to raise the dead by their prayers. Mm. Right. So perhaps holiness today, you know, looks different than it did in the fourth century when the environment was so... Um, conducive. conducive to holiness that you know uh, again Father Zacharias talks about in the desert fathers how they would say like they, they knew fathers who could make the, the sun stop you know uh, or they could make it dance in the sky by their prayers mm-hmm. you know that's maybe not the environment we live in today but maybe just I still have my eclipse keep... glasses does that count for any... <laughs> <laughs> just so that I, I way to flatten that point yeah sorry I, I just killed you, everything <laughs> I forgive me Father 